I'm, I'm saying shoot, it's exactly x squared minus a squared. Okay, so the substitution that I'm going to make is x is a what? A secant theta. Same, same thing we just did a second ago, isn't it? What's a for us? A is a. Okay, so we're actually doing this more in general. Like this is like a general solution here. So this is it, right? This is what I'm going to make as my substitution. X is a secant theta. So had this been minus 100, that would be 10 secant theta. What if that had been minus 5? Square root of 5. I'll do one like that in a little while. But All right, so let's write things down. I already know x is a secant theta. Very disappointed in myself. What next? Before the square root, differentiate. Okay, differentiate this. dx is a secant theta tangent theta d theta. Did y'all hear me say it? I don't think yeah, I don't think I said it very loud. I, it. I know the mic heard me. That for sure. And then the square root of x squared minus a squared. So that's square root of a squared secant squared theta minus a squared. And what would you do at this point? So I took x, right? Here's x. I put it right there. I squared it, and that's what I got. Now, they both have an a squared. So factor out an a squared. You got that identity, secant squared theta minus 1 again. See, that's always going to happen. Every single time you do this substitution, that will always happen. And you're going to turn out getting, <coughs> at the end here, square root a squared tan squared theta. And finally, a tan theta. Yes, yeah, so now we go and we rewrite this. This is equal to, all right, 1 over the square root thing. The square root thing is a tan theta. So 1 over a tan theta times, don't forget this part, dx, which is a secant theta tangent theta d theta. A secant theta tangent theta d theta. And now I get to call on people. Yay! I'm just trying to get through everyone because I think it's only fair if I call on everyone once. <clears throat> Let's see here. Alexa? You've been called on, right? Yes? I remember last class, right? Oh, yeah. Why did I not mark that? Oh, because. All right. <coughs> Lewis, mm -hmm. I called on you too. Why didn't I? Why didn't I? Mark that? May, I might have to restart, but hold on. I want to make sure no one gets away. Diego. Yeah, I don't. Justin. Justin. I don't think Justin's been here for a while. All right. How about Steven? No, no one, because some people are hiding from me. Uh, Derek? Steven? Okay. All right. Thank you, Steven. All right, Steven. What does that integral become? Clean it, clean it up for me. Where am I at here? Okay. Anything else you want to cancel? Yeah? Okay. I agree. 
So what are you left with? D theta. You know what to do with that? I can give you a give you a hint. This was the one what I told you last class that I had insulted my morning class by telling them that they would never get this in their entire lifetime. Remember that? So there's like this hidden one. I said you never need to know this, but I made you all appreciate it. There's a formula on your sheet for this. So can you find it real quick? I want to make sure that Stephen finds it. What is it? Uh, yep. The Absolute value. value of so for us, though, it's secant theta plus tan theta. Close it up, plus C. Everyone agree? Times A. Times A, what? No, yeah, I think we're, we lost our A's, right? The A's canceled out? All right, Stephen, keep going. Um, we need to get this back to X, right? So how are you going to get this information? Uh, triangle. OK, so you start off with what to get for your triangle? OK. I'm going to write that down for you, Stephen. Then you can tell me what to do after that. X equals A secant theta. What do you want me to do now? OK, good. X over A is secant theta. Now, okay, I'll draw it. Label theta. Close, close. Hypotenuse, because that's that's a reciprocal of cosine, right? So x is there, and a is adjacent. A is going to be the adjacent. And that forces this side to be the root part, right? Root x squared minus a squared. I think we're, we're there, right? All right, finish it up, Stephen. What's my answer here? Natural log, absolute value. Secant theta, which you kind of already had that, didn't you? Oh, yeah. yeah, I mean, it, it, was, it was there, which we could kind of do a little shortcut there. And then plus, now, tangent theta. Opposite over adjacent, so this over A plus C. Good. You're off the hook, Stephen. Yes. OK, good question. Um, can you split the natural log? Yes and no. You first have to put these together. They have a common denominator. So is it all right if I do that right now? I'm going to make this. Right? Ooh. Ooh. They had the same denominator, so I could do that, right? Yeah? Yes? OK, now what you could do is you could use a property of logs that if you have division of two logs, you can turn it, I mean, sorry, division inside of a log, you can split it into two logs with subtraction. So that's the most you could do. And that's probably what the book would do. Watch. The book would probably do this. Natural log, absolute value of x uh, plus square root x squared minus a squared minus natural log a plus c, but then we'd realize that this right here is just a constant anyway. So they'd probably dump this natural log a part completely and just put plus c. Did you move the negative Could you move it? Yeah, or it just disappears. It just, it's still a constant, right? Like minus a number is the same as plus a number. You know, this, it's just a number. So would it just end up being ln of x plus? This right here. Plus some constant, yeah. All right, good. How about Derek? 
I have that I haven't called on you, Derek. Is that, does that sound right? Yeah. Okay. I'm not going to call on you right away for this one because this one's going to take a little bit of work to get started. All right. So it was x cubed over 4x squared plus 9, I think that's what it was, yeah. to the 3 halves dx. It's which one? Which? I don't even see a square root, so I don't even know what you're talking about. Oh, there is a square root. There's a square root there? Yeah. Yeah, so we need to all make sure we realize that there's a square root there. It is um, 4x squared plus 9 is underneath the root, right? 4x squared plus 9, that thing right there is then being cubed. That's what raising to the 3 halves means, right? Say again? I thought it meant the equation on the inside was going to cube. It's both, actually. When you write down, this is good FYI, okay? If I write down u to the 3 halves, that's the same as the square root of u cubed, but that's the same as the square root of u cubed. They're all the same. Yeah, and a way you could justify that is by saying this is the same as u cubed to the half, but that's the same as u to the half cubed, right? Because you're still multiplying power. It's crazy that that all works like that, but that works, right? That makes sense? Okay, so now I see it. You see, everyone see it? Looks kind of like. So I'm thinking now. I get to think. I'm thinking that this looks a lot like square root of. What is it on the sheet? A squared or x squared? A squared plus x squared. Now with with the addition, it doesn't matter if it's written that way or the other way, right? Those are exactly the same. And it only works that way for addition. But is it actually that? It has a 4 in front of the x squared, right? Yeah, I know it's a constant, but the formula says explicitly or implies that that's a 1, right? Yes? You can take the square root of that 4, but um, not right away because you have two terms separated by addition, right? But we're still going to be able to do it. So I want to try and make this 4, 1, all right? You ready for that? So here it comes. I'm, I'm still, still thinking. Well, maybe I'm actually writing at this point. So I'm, I'm trying to get to that, right? So. This will be some scratch work on the side here. I take a look at this thing I have. I really want a 1 in front of the x squared instead of a 4. So I factor out a greatest common factor. But wait a minute, there is no greatest common factor. But I factor the 4 out anyway. Because we can always do that. And this is just something you should know you can do algebraically. This is a legitimate move, right? If I pull a 4 out of this, it's gone. If I pull out a 4 out of a four, four, 9, I can't really unless I divide it by 4 at the same time. So if I distribute this back through, do you believe we'd be back at there? That's what we do. Now, now because this is multiplication, you can go square root of 4 times square root x squared plus 9 fourths. And the square root of 4, of course, is just a 2, right? All right, so I'm going to rewrite the integral still. I'm not ready to make my trigonometric substitution. I'm just preparing the integrand for my substitution, which is still coming down the road here in a minute. So I've got integral x cubed over this root right here turned into what? Square root 4, which I'm going to write as 2. Root x squared plus 9 fourths. All of this cubed dx. All 
I want to do a little more work before I do my trig sub. Anyone have an idea of what I'm about to do? I'm going to cube the two. I'm going to cube the two. I'm going to cube the two and then cube the root and just, you know, take the two out. The two cubed out. Did I miss something? You just, you just said, I'm going to cube the two. I'm going to cube the two. I'm going to cube the two. <laughs> I'm gonna cube the two. <laughs> Oh, okay. I'm going to cube the two. <laughs> and it's going to come out as a one-eighth. The important thing is that you don't pull this as a one-half out, right? If you pull that two out as a one-half, it's wrong. Because it has to get cubed before it's removed from that parenthesis. Another one of those things that students will make, you know, mistakes on. Just be careful with that. I still have x cubed on top over... Uh, square root of x squared plus 9 fourths dx. Questions? Now we may begin. I uh, don't know what you're talking about. Pay attention, please, okay? <laughs> it's there. It was there. I don't know what happened to the cube. It's, I'm tired. All right, now I am ready to make the trigonometric substitution because now it does look like this, right? I have a square root. I have 1 in front of x squared plus a squared. What's a? A is going to be 3 halves. It's the square root of the 9 fourths. Right? a squared, this is a squared, right? So a is the square root of it, which is, nine, is 3 halves. What is the trigon question? No. What is the trigonometric substitution that you make when you see this form? X is a tan theta, right? A tan theta. So here we go. Trig sub time. There's the integral I'm working with. In fact, I think I'm going to rewrite it up here. I'm just going to start over. Give myself some room. I'm working on the integral one eighth integral x cubed over square root x squared plus 9 fourths cubed dx. And my substitution is x is a 3 halves tangent theta. And now Derek, Derek's up. Okay, Derek, there are three things we need now, right? So what's the first piece? Okay, good. And then moving along, I now need the root part, right? So what is the square root of x squared plus 9 fourths? So what's x squared? Derek? Three, tan three halves tan, right, that whole thing, squared? Five. So square the three halves and you'll get your nine fourths, right? Yeah. So you're going to have nine fourths, then tan squared theta, that's x squared, plus nine fourths. And it's always going to work this way that you're going to have the common factor here and that you can pull it out. If you don't have the common factor, you've, you've gone wrong somewhere. So Derek, GCF now, right? Pull this. Yep, tan squared plus one, tan squared theta plus one. Tan squared theta plus one is secant squared theta. And now take the square root of each one, 3 halves secant theta. Yeah? Questions? Comments? Concerns? Complaints? Gripes? Anybody? Ooh. That's what I wanted. Those are the three things that are important to me now. 
and I'm going to rewrite. All right, I think I've gone through. Nope, I haven't. I know. I, I just don't know how to pronounce your name. Oh, yeah, call me Jason. Jason. Oh, shit, well, that makes it easy. Oh, thank you. Thank you. So I'm just having a bad.